Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. So this will be our 28th part in the series. And what we have going on here is that we have to determine the area of the red region shown in the circle here. And we are told that the smaller circle is inscribed within the white trapezoid and the white trapezoid is inscribed within the larger circle. And we are also given the dimensions of the white trapezoid. So just a few points here of noting is that whenever it is stated that the small circle is inscribed within the white trapezoid, what that means is that the smaller circle is 100% within the white trapezoid and the edges of the circle align with the edges of the trapezoid. Well, same thing going on here with the next statement where it says the white trapezoid is inscribed in the larger circle, meaning that the white trapezoid is 100% within the larger circle and the corners of that white trapezoid align with the edges of that larger circle. So in order to find the overall area in red, we have to determine either the radius or diameter for this inner circle, and then the radius and diameter for the outer circle. So the total area in red will be our 100% of our inner circle plus the outer circle subtracting off 100% of the area of the white trapezoid. So let's work on the inner portion first with the inner circle and the white trapezoid to see if we can't find the radius or diameter of the inner circle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw vertical lines from A down to B intersecting or down to BC intersecting it at 90 degrees like this. And then the same thing over here from point D down to BC intersecting it at 90 degrees. And what forms here is that I get a rectangle here in the center and then two right triangles on the left and right side. Now this will be two inches right here through the middle. And then since we are six inches all the way across, we are going to get two similar triangles forming on the left and right here with this being two inches and this being two inches as well. Now, why did I draw these vertical lines? Well, the vertical lines are going to be the height of my trapezoid, which what is the height of the trapezoid equal to? Well, since the red circle is inscribed in the trapezoid, all the edges are touching, and that means that the height of the trapezoid will be the diameter of my red circle. So how do I find the height of my trapezoid? which is equal to the diameter of my circle. Well, I'm just going to use one of these right triangles. I can either use the left one or the right one and just use the Pythagorean theorem to find the height here for, of my dashed line. So that would be using the Pythagorean theorem for a right triangle. It would be four squared minus off the two squared. And that would give me two square roots of three inches for the height of my trapezoid, which is also equal to the diameter of my inner circle. So now that I have the diameter of my inner circle, I can easily find the area of it using that diameter. Or if you want to use the radius, that's perfectly fine. So the area of my inner circle will just be this. It'd be pi d squared for diameter squared over 4. So this would just be pi times two square roots of three inches squared all over four. And this gives me an area of that inner circle being three pi inches squared. Alrighty, so now we found a good piece of the puzzle there. And while we are here, let's go ahead and let's just find the area of my trapezoid because we're going to need that to subtract off from the total area of the larger circle. So the area of my trapezoid would just be the area of this right triangle multiplied by two, and then the area of this vertical rectangle here, which if you wanna write it out in long form would look something like this of two times the two triangles, which would be one half base times height of two inches times two times the square root of three inches, and then plus the internal rectangle of two inches times two times square root of three inches, which just basically boils down to two, times two inches times two square root of three inches. And this gives me an overall area of eight square root of three inches squared. 
All right, so now that I found the area of my white trapezoid and I found the area of my inner red circle, let's go back up to here. And we're going to have to use this trapezoid with its dimensions. And then we can find the overall radius of our larger circle. So let's go ahead and work with that. So what I've done is copied that portion down here. So what I'm going to do to make things a little bit easier here to find the radius of this larger circle is that I'm going to draw from my corners and my centers of each um, segment of this trapezoid to the center of the larger circle. So the larger circle, let's just say it has a center and we're gonna call it O, point O. So let's draw from each corner to point O. So we're gonna get a lot of triangles forming here. So B and then A down to O, and then just picture these all being extremely straight lines, which you know they should be. And then I'm also going to draw from the center of AD down to point O. So that's a perpendicular bisector right there. And then the same thing from here, perpendicular bisector from O down to BC. I'm gonna call this point M down here. I'm gonna call this point J up here. So I know that B to M, since it's a perpendicular bisector, BC was uh, six inches, so this is three inches. This is three inches. And AD was two inches. And since we have a perpendicular bisector, this will be one inch from J to D. And this will, nope, not 11. And this will also be one inch from A to J. So how does that help me? Well, let's work out some issues here. So what I'm looking for is that I am looking for B to O or D to O or A to O or C to O because all of these lines that I originally drew are going to be my radius. So this will be my radius, 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 and radius here. And that's what I'm looking for. So let's relate some triangles in here and let's, put, uh, let's apply the Pythagorean theorem. So let's work with this triangle here at the bottom, the right triangle here of BOM or BMO. So from triangle BMO. This is what we're going to have using the Pythagorean theorem. So we would have BM squared plus MO squared is equal to BO squared. Well, BO squared is essentially just my radius squared, which I'm going to interchange lowercase r and uppercase r. So what do we know? Do we know anything in here? Well, we know BM is going to be three inches. So essentially what we have here is three inches squared plus MO squared is equal to my radius squared. All right, well, really can't do much with that one. So let's look at a different rectangle or a different triangle here. So let's look at triangle DOJ. So from triangle DOJ, what we have going on here is that we have DJ squared plus JO squared is equal to DO squared, which once again, DO is my radius. Well, I do know that DJ is one inch. So essentially what I have here is one squared plus JO squared is equal to my radius squared. All right, so how does that help me? Well, look at what JO plus MO is equal to. Well. JO plus MO is equal to JM. Yay, what does that accomplish? Well, what is JM? JM is the height of my trapezoid. So JM, we just calculated earlier to be the height of the trapezoid, which was two square roots of three. So this is two times the square root of three inches tall. So let's rearrange here and let's get JO is equal to two square roots of three minus off MO. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and plug it in right here for JO. So in doing that, this is what I end up with. I end up with one squared, which is just one, plus two square roots of three minus off MO squared, 
is equal to my radius squared. So this gives me one plus two squared of three squared minus off two M O times two square roots of three plus M O squared equals R squared. So let's simplify this down even further. And as you walk through this, we will end up here with one plus four times three minus off four square roots of three M O plus M O squared is equal to R squared. Well, let's simplify that down one more time, and we end up with 13 minus 4 squared roots of 3MO plus MO squared is equal to R squared. Well, how does that help us? Well, look what we have with our previous triangle here. Well, the previous triangle, we have this equation. So we have 3 squared plus MO squared plus R squared. So we can rearrange and solve for m sub o with this one and then plug it into the equation we were just working with. So from the previous equation, we would have m o squared is equal to my radius squared minus 3 squared, which is just 9. So what I can do is I can take this and boom, plug it in for m o squared. And I end up with 13 minus off 4 squared of 3 m o plus r squared minus 9 is equal to r squared. Well, r squareds are going to drop out. And if we simplify down here, let me scroll down just a little bit more. We end up with 4 minus a 4 squared roots of 3 m o is equal to 0. Well, m o will be equal to minus 4 over minus 4 squared roots of 3, which is equal to 3 or square root of 3 over 3 inches. Well, what I can do is come up here and plug it back into this equation, square it, and then add 9 to it, and then that would give me RO once I square root it. So plugging back in MO into this simplified equation right here, we can get our radius for our larger circle, which would just be the square root of 9 plus MO squared, which is 9 plus the square root of three squared. So this just gives me, and we're gonna, it doesn't come out to be a nice number, so we're just gonna leave it like this. So the radius is the square root of 28 over three inches. So that's my radius for my larger circle. And now with the radius of the larger circle, I can easily find the overall area of that larger circle. So area of larger circle. would just be pi r squared, which let me scroll down a little bit further here, would be pi times my radius squared, which is the square root of 28 over three inches squared. So the square root and square cancel each other and we end up with 28 pi over three inches squared. Well, now that I have the total area of the entire circle, I just have to subtract out my area of my white trapezoid and then add back in the area of the internal circle and I am left with everything that is in red. So let's go ahead and do all that. So total area in red. Would just be this would be my outer circle of 28 times pi over three, subtracting off the area of my trapezoid, which was eight square roots of three inches squared, and then adding in the area of my internal circle or my larger circle, or my smaller circle, sorry, would just be three pi inches squared. And this gives us, of course, not a nice number, but it pops out to be approximately 24.89 inches squared, rounded off there, of course. And that would be our final area in red for this problem. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you learned a new math skill from it along the way. And if you want to test your abilities even further, please check out the other videos on our channel, as this is the 28th part in this series. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel, because all of that does assist us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.